Okay. Um, how about this? You know how you're always trying to learn about sarcasm? No. No? I was being sarcastic. Oh, good for you. In the beginning of the video, you saw Sheldon Cooper from Big Bang Theory finally start to understand what sarcasm is. But what is sarcasm really? Sarcasm is the use of irony to mock or convey something. It can be dangerous because if somebody is sarcastic, and you don't know that they're sarcastic, you might be led to believe something that isn't true. And you might think it's super serious and might be really negative. For it's so bad that the North Korean government has banned sarcasm altogether. Why not both? Then everybody's happy. Oh yeah, everyone's real happy then. Do I detect a note of sarcasm? Are you kidding me? This baby is off the charts. Why? <laughs> oh, a sarcasm detector. Well, that's a real useful invention. The reason why we chose to work with sarcasm detection is because over the break we actually worked on one of the projects in natural language processing and we found one common one common uh, difficulty or the issue that many of the languages many of the projects in NLP faced and that was the issue of sarcasm because sarcasm is not something that is that is firm it's not something that is clear it is something that's so ambiguous that it might create trouble in whatever you're trying to achieve and also on top of that when we started our research on on the on the importance of sarcasm detection we found one article in which the united states secret services asked the, the it companies in america to come up with sarcasm detector so that they can figure out all the all the online platforms where people are misinforming other people using sarcasm number two is the product the product reviews on amazon or on imdb where people sometimes they do get sarcastic and they do not Get, and they give the reviews that are not true, but people normally interpret them as as the reviews that are that are that are a true reflection of that product or that film. There are, however, a few problems with detecting sarcasm in text. The first problem being there's no voice. In voice, there's tone, inflection. You can kind of hear emotion in what they're saying. For example, if somebody says, "Boy, I love going to school," you can hear the. There's not really the true love. It's sarcastic. Another problem is there's no background information, such as who said it, or how, like how they feel when they said it. The, somebody rich might say, boy, I love being rich, and you can understand that's true. If somebody poor says, boy, I love being rich, that's sarcastic. But to the computer, both of these are the same things. The computer can only see text, and with only text, it doesn't know who said it, or how they felt when they said it. So for this project, we obtained our data using a Twitter API, and the reason why we're using Twitter to get all to get the text that we're going to run in our machine learning algorithms for sarcasm detection is because in Twitter there was a famous trend when people, after they write something that's sarcastic, they used to put a hashtag sarcasm or sarcastic. And there's already a pretty well-developed Twitter API in which if you write a hashtag, it live fetches all the tweets for you. So we actually used that Twitter API to detect or to fetch all the all the tweets that end with hashtag sarcastic sarcasm or uh, hashtag sarcastic and we believe that if people put that those tweets have a really strong chance of being sarcastic but this thing has a few pro and a few cons one of the pro is that many people when many people when they worked when they thought of working on sarcasm detection they actually gathered a bit of data on this thing so there already exist many data sets in which people already have compiled all the sarcastic tweets and non-sarcastic tweets uh, but the con side is that when when you get the non-sarcastic tweets, because getting the sarcastic tweets is easy, you only fetch the tweets that are sarcastic and that ha that end with sar sarcasm or sarcastic hashtag. But when you get the non-sarcastic tweet, you actually rely on an on a on a on a fact or on an opinion that all the tweets that do not end with such hashtags are non-sarcastic. The second step in detecting sarcasm in text is to pre-process the data. This is mainly to get rid of any noise that could affect our classifier. So the first thing we wanted to do was remove any URLs from any of the tweets. We use regular expressions to detect any URLs and remove them. Why? Because the information in the URL could be, va could be valuable, but we don't, we don't have any way to access that. It could be images, but we don't have any reliable way to get any information from that. The second thing we can do is remove any tweets with an at sign at the beginning. An at sign at the beginning means it's a reply, so there's further context that we are unable to gather. We also want to remove any useless words such as the, a, or an. So we use a, we use a library called NLTK, the Natural Language Toolkit, and it has a, you can import something called stop words, 
Which stop words are these type of words, and so you remove all of these words because they're not important in sarcasm. They, any sarcastic text has it, any non-sarcastic te text has it. The, the fourth thing we want to do is remove any non-ASCII characters. So for example, a Chinese character or an E with an accent mark over it because we only want English. Finally, or fifth, we want to remove all hashtags because hashtags, for example, hashtag sarcasm. All sarcastic tweets will have hashtag sarcasm, and we don't want that to affect our classifier. Six, we want to remove the word sarcasm and sarcastic, even normal text. So if it's not a hashtag, we still want to remove it because it could, it could over affect our classifier. And then finally, after all of this, we will remove all tweets with three or less words because it's almost impossible to be sarcastic with three or less words. So now for the feature extraction or feature engineering. The reason why we're, we're extracting all the features is because we believe that features are actually the meat of an algorithm. In any algorithm, in the machine learning algorithm, you input your features and then you decide which feature gives you better accuracy. So number, number one feature that we plan to extract or we plan to engineer is the feature of n-grams. Now what exactly is n-grams? In computational linguistics, n-gram model is a probabilistic model in which you look at different words that go together to make a sense out of a phrase. So you can have an, you can have a unigram. Unigram are all the single words that exist in a sentence. And then you can have bigram. Now what exactly is bigram? Bigram are two words, if you put them together, they make more sense instead of when you put one word, or when you break that word into single words. For example, you can say New York. Now if you just say New, or if you just say New York, that might not make a lot of sense. But if you say New York, it's pretty, it's pretty simple, it's pretty intuitive that a person means a city. New York. Or you can say mostly the names are biograms, like Donald Trump. Now if you said Donald, it, not, it might not be clear what, which Donald you're talking about. So it's better if you use biograms for, the, for those things. And if you put all that model together, unigrams, biograms, or n-grams in general, they help you predict what the next word is going to be. And that is one of our features that we believe is essential to our model. Another one of the features we want to look at is sentiment analysis. What sentiment is saying, is it positive, negative, or neutral? For most things, you want to just have one sentiment for the entire piece. But for, for the sarcasm detection, we want to have two, two sentiments. So we split it up in the middle, around the middle. Because in sarcasm, usually there's a positive sentiment followed by a negative sentiment, or a negative sentiment followed by a positive sentiment. So another feature that we think is essential to our model is the feature of topics. So how we said at the beginning that in, getting a sarcast in detecting a sarcastic tweet, it's really important that you know what's the background of that tweet. So how my partner said at the beginning, if a, if a rich guy says, I love being rich, that's not sarcastic. But if a poor guy says, I love being rich, I mean, you know that's sarcastic because that guy is not actually, actually rich. So we, our hypothesis is that getting topics of, of the tweets that we have, we can actually detect sarcasm a lot better. The fourth feature we'll be extracting is capitalization. But what we want to look at is the number of capitalized, completely capitalized words. So the whole word has to be capitalized. And we'll set, a, we'll set various thresholds and see how these affect our classifiers. The reason for this is a fully capitalized word usually shows more emotion. Like, wow, I'm so happy, and you make it all capitalized. You can kind of feel the emotion. And what we, we expect to happen is the ones with more emotion, the more capitalized words, will be less sarcastic because emotion is, tend, to be, tend to be true. The fifth and final feature we'll be using is parts of speech. While at the beginning we don't know how this will affect the classifier, we might see later on that sarcastic tweets have more nouns or more adjectives. So we're just going to try it out and see how it affects our classifier. So now to the part where we talk about our choice of classifier and the results that we obtained using them. Number one, we used logistic regression. Now logistic regression is a supervised machine learning algorithm for classification that gives you probabilities for classification. And it uses a popular sigmoid function and once you have obtained a result, it, it, get, it assigns every result a probability. Uh, and the probability that is greater than 0 0.5 is classified as positive, in which in our case is sarcastic, and a probability of less than 0 0.5 is not sarcastic in our case. And then we use gradient descent to maximize the log likelihood. The second model that we're planning to use is support vector machines. Now, we denote the class that each point x belongs to belongs by y, which is either 1 or minus 1. So basically, we have two classes, non-sarcastic and sarcastic. And our ultimate goal is to maximize the margin between these two classes so that it's, it's, it's easy and it's prominent when you look at the graph to identify which plot belongs to which, uh, which class. And then, uh, finally, 
We also plan to use a kernel trick in our support vector machines, which is non-linear support vector machine, because the linear support vector machine does not does not differentiate or does not distinguish between. Um, it only works on linear separable data. So if we use the Gaussian kernel and do the kernel trick, we might be able to differentiate if the data is linearly non-separable. We put 75% of our tweets into a training set and 25% into a testing set. With logistic regression, we had 62.67% accuracy, and with linear support vector machines, we had 52.87% accuracy. These numbers are pretty low, so we had to try to figure out why. We got the confusion matrix to report false negatives, which are misclassified as non-sarcastic, and false positives, which are misclassified as sarcastic. Then we saw log logistic regression had 39.2% false negative and 9.53% false positive. SVM had 44.5% false negative and 9.38% false positive. And the reason we think is unbalanced data. We had 25,000 sarcastic tweets and 125,000 non-sarcastic tweets. So we tried to find a solution for the unbalanced data. First, we tried oversampling, which means we repeated the sarcastic tweets five times each to balance the data set, so we had almost the same number of sarcastic and non-sarcastic tweets. After this, we had logis logistic regression getting 82.02% accuracy and linear SVM getting 78.29% accuracy rate, with the C and sigma values at 0 0.01. We also tried undersampling, which means we only kept one-fourth of the non-sarcastic tweets in the data set. So we had almost the same amount, but it was a lower amount this time. The logistic regression got 73% accuracy and the linear SVM got 71.67% accuracy rate. So in conclusion, we, we found that oversampling gave the best improvement. We then tried nonlinear SVM on oversampled data set, and we found the accuracy to be 85.33%, again, C and sigma being 0 0.01, and with cross-validation of five folds. So after this, we have a hypothesis that the data is not linearly separable, because we got better results with nonlinear. So in the future, we plan to get rid of more noise from our data sets, try to apply a naive bias, and the tweet should also be pulled over a longer period of time. We should also try to get more features extracted.